Building a reliable scissor lift in FTC is one of the toughest engineering challenges that a team can take on, which is why most teams decide to avoid it entirely. So uh, it does pretty well, both samples and specimens. It is somewhat better on samples. We did optimize it. But team 19082 RoboAs from Romania didn't just build one. They built a single compact scissor lift as their outtake elevator and another two to act as their endgame hang. Understanding how they iterated over this mechanism will give you a concrete framework for attacking your own complex designs and finding elegant solutions to future game challenges. My name is Coach Pratt. And after coaching FTC teams to national champions and Inspire Award wins, I can tell you the design this clean and effective is something that you need to see. That's why I had to pull them aside at the European Premier event for the 2024-25 Into the Deep season. In this episode of Robots Revealed, we're going to break down their entire robot. We'll start with their game strategy, look at their wicked quick active intake and their outtake, and then we'll do a deep dive into how they engineered those incredibly functional scissor lifts. We'll also cover a few other unique features that made the robot a top performer. So tell me about your general strategy for the season. Were you a sample robot? Were you a specimen robot? What did you what did you go for this season? So this season we tried to make a robot that is both high performing in samples and in specimens as well, because you never know what you're going to play. So uh, it does pretty well, both samples and specimens. It is somewhat better on samples. We did optimize it a bit more for basket. So let's talk about your intake then. Tell me about this. So the intake is, it's an active intake. It uses four, br- four brushes, two uh, horizontal, two vertical. It, and it's uh, made to intake both samples and specimens. Mm. So if a specimen comes, it has space here for the clip. That's why there are two. And these trap doors open to let the clip through. So oh, uh, there's trap doors up in there. Yep. Those trap doors uh, here, okay. they open to let the, the specimen inside. What's the purpose of that trap door? Is it to hold it in place? Is it to... It's uh, to close this gap here yeah. when uh, under normal opera- operation, like okay. for samples. Yep. But when the specimen comes in, it comes with if a clip up hook. and they get out of the way. Ah, I got For the clip you. to pass through. So it, it helps the sample ha- be held in place a little yes. bit better. Exactly. Okay, yeah. And on the back here, if you can come... We have these uh, two rollers on an accent servo. These servos grab the sample one and align it once it's in the intake. And from here on, we basically decide what to do with it. It automatically, autom- autonomously decides if to eject it back towards the back, if it's the wrong color, mm-hmm. pull it back into the brushes if we need to give it to the human player, or hold it and eject it in the robot if it's a yellow sample. And where's your color sensor for that? Are you using the limelight up here to be able to do that? So the limelight is only for the autonomous. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the, all the automations in Tiliop are yeah. uh, using this here oh, sensor. Oh, right down there. Yes, I as well you. as the proximity sensor. Okay. So you have yeah. a proximity and the color sensor. Yeah. The color sensor is from uh, Brush, Brush Labs. Yeah. Shout out to them. Very yeah. good sensor. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's basically fully automated. Okay. And how are you pivoting this up and down? Is it using this motor there to yes. pivot it? Or so, what is it using to pivot? So it's using yeah. this servo here. If you oh, can the come, servo I think from that. my point of view, you can yes. see it best. It's this servo here yeah. with an RC car shock absorber. Yep. The idea behind this is when it pushes it down, if, the, if it lands on a sample, it doesn't stress the servo. Like the shock absorber can uh, let the intake rest upwards a bit and then fall down when the... Yeah. When it gets great off the idea. sample. Yeah, great idea. And then you have a, you've got two linear sides here. You're powered on one side. Yes. It's passive on the other. And you have a, a scissor lift to be able to use your cable management. Cable yes. Up? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, initially we had the string on both sliders. We had them both powered. Yeah. But for this event, we took the string off of this one to reduce friction. Yeah. Making it somewhat faster. Yeah. So, yep. The, you said correctly, this Misumi slides all yep. normal and the scissor cable holder. Now, to move to the outtake, once the sample is in the intake, it retracts into the robot. And right here, it's not really easy to see. Let me give a, get a sample. Do we have a sample around here? Yeah. Okay, we do not have a sample. It's okay, but you can see in here, yeah, so, you have the uh, sample in that square section. Okay, so the oh, sample comes through here, and it's brought by, hold, held by these rollers. Yeah. It's held by these rollers and then it's ejected backwards once in the robot. Yep. The claw closes around it and the scissor lift lifts it. Okay, the servo is not engaged, so yes. ignore that. Yeah. 
the lift lifts it into the high basket position in under half a second. So in like half a second, the lift is up. And the that's R quite a unique geared system you got going on here. Uh, yes. Yeah, so first of all, we have a differential in the middle yep. so that we can use the power of both servos when uh, going, yep. when flipping the arm, as well as auto-adjusting the angle with the gyroscope, both in teleop and out. And then this is a dead gear here. This yeah, this is around. a dead gear and this is pivoting. This allows us to have two to one ratio. So basically it's faster. Yeah. And the primary thing that it does, it allows it to be longer downwards because we needed it to reach inside the robot while being very short here. So the pivot changes. This gives very little space, so it doesn't, we don't extend too much. And you find that this gives you enough tension so when you drive into yeah. the bar and you're holding a clip here. And, uh, when scoring specimens, yeah. it comes into this position. Yeah. And the specimen is like this, actually. Yep. Hold on. And that's quite some unique geometries on this. Is that like a TPU design or why uh, did you decide on a claw that has like a, a rather prism shape here? Yeah, so uh, but a if hexagon I over spin there. this around, yeah. you have this uh, plastic thing here. Yes. Originally in the robot, the sample is like this. Yep. And if it's a specimen, the clip would be downwards. So yes. it's not good. Yes. So this, so this wrist mechanism here, this yep. servo, it's used to adjust the angle of this. It's a bit oh, hard. I'm just saying this. the geometry is quite unique. I haven't seen anyone do geometry like this for the actual claw part. Yeah, so this one is. Yeah, it's clearly it has this geometry to so we'll yeah, clip but this. And this one here is. This one, good. since it's dead, so it just spins, yep. we needed it to clip in uh, any direction, yes. no matter where this was left. Yes, that makes so sense. So that's why it has this shape. So it always does, so never jams, basically. Very clever. You know, so that's the claw. Now, as for the lift mechanism, Instead of using sliders, we opted for a 3D printed scissor lift. This yeah. is the fifth iteration. It was not an easy job. The way it works is if you can come down here for a sec. These two motors, you can see the screws on the axles and the gears. Spin a gear in the middle. Let's spin this. And uh, ah, okay. they move You're using this a lead, lead screw. screw. And this lead screw basically moves the. Yeah. This, mo this module Let's right here. That, yeah. And uh, the whole thing is resting on, if you can come up, on three, one here and two down, two stainless steel beams. Yeah, I'm seeing one beam in here and then the other two beams are where? Are on the bottom, basically holding oh, the Oh, yes, I see that. It's a linear rod. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so that's what holds cylinder, everything. With linear that's bearings. straining it inside. Yeah. Okay, so there's a steel cylinder there that's pinching or moving left and right. Yeah. There. Wow, yeah, that's exactly. super slick. And the whole How have you thing... found the reliability of that being a scissor lift as opposed to something like a box tube lift or a, a linear slide? So uh, I mean, it's clearly performing well for you guys. I've seen <laughs> you compete out there, and it's, it's wicked quick. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really fast, and yeah. it really helps having all these springs. Like, okay. counter springing on a slider system, is, it's doable, and a lot of teams do it. But it's somewhat, uh, it's not that easy to implement. Yes. Meanwhile, leaving some room in the design here to allow these springs to sit inside, to rest inside the lift, basically give it a boost. The second yeah, it leaves, leaves the robot, it just jumps up. And are these little acetyl plates to help it make it reduce your friction as you're uh, flying? Yes, they are custom CNC, the yep. DPU washers. Okay, yeah. So what you'll see is, if can I show the portfolio? Yes. So if you look at this diagram right here, Will it yep. focus? Yep. yep. That's how a joint is made. So you can see the, the screw, the embedded nut, the washers, and the bearings holding the module. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. They're CNC'd by us. Yeah. 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 Here's a nice cross section of the lift. If, if you can see the bevel gears inside. So how the transfer is made from the motors to the, to the lead screw. Very cool. Very cool. I'm surprised that it's so stable despite the lead screw just being in the bottom. 15 centimeters. Yeah, it's, uh, it does have a little bit of play, like especially yeah. at a lower height, yeah. it's a bit flexible. However, we are using this to our advantage because when scoring a specimen, yeah. the odometry, of course, has some uh, error. So what we do is we always push against the bar a bit more using the flex of the plastic without stressing the lift too much, of course. And then it, always, it almost always scores. That's why it's so reliable in the auto. Now, your hanging mechanism looks really interesting here because you have a scissor hang here, but you also have 
Yeah, some chords here. Tell me about that. Yes. Yeah, so the first, we, ha- we do have a level three ascent. For the level two part of it, the lift goes fully up, opening these hooks, which are held uh, in this position for uh, safety purposes. Yeah. So but it basically pulls this roller here. On, it pulls on this string, and when it pulls on this string, these things open. So they open. We go in position next to the bar, and this hook is pulled down by two wires connected to the same two motors that power the lift. Only the catch is that since this only lifts this high when the lift is up, you basically have twice the mechanical advantage compared to a set of sliders. Like if you were just put the hook on a slider on the lift, it would be much weaker. So we don't need a gearbox. We just use mechanical advantage. So this pulls down on the bar. Of course, when they catch the bar, they will stay open. And when the robot is like this, you have to imagine it's face down. So it hangs with the intake towards the ground. And since it's face down, then we engage our second hang mechanism. Here you can see the PTO. So one servo, give me one second. The same servo connects the gear to the mo- to the That's just chassis motors out to pop into some gears that it are moves, on the side of your It device. moves downwards, so uh, it down. pivots. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. It's up and so, then slides down. So it's up and it and down. Yeah. Beautiful. It, Very. It simple. pivots from a, a point there, and at the same time, since that couples the motors, this mechanism here, the hook, gets triggered and it jumps out, spring loaded. Yeah. And, and remember, the robot is. With fa- it's face down. So this okay? will be so, parallel too. Yeah. So this will be right next to the bar. Yeah. And the string that you see here comes along this down, and here comes along the along here yep. upwards to a spool on this axle. So the weight of the robot pushes these gears together, so the PTO never slips. Yeah. So when you drive backwards, you spin this, of course, pulling on a, a spinning a spool, pulling on the string, compressing this, and slowly but not too slowly, like 10 seconds, lifting the robot into the level three ascent position. Yeah, you can see there's that pulley just yeah. inside him back there. Exactly. Running and around, here, and there's a pulley behind that. So the spool, the spool here is what pulls the string, and this little white thing that you see, yep. if... Yeah, no, right I saw that one up, up here. Already, yes. Come, like, straight from the top. Like this thing here, the white spool, yes. is there only when I reload the system, it automatically... It uh, pulls uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the string. string, you know, yeah. so the string doesn't stay loose in the robot. Yeah. It's not actuated by anything, it's simply a string. Uh, yeah. And when it's extended, it has a pulley inside of it, and the string goes basically through it. As You, you can't really see, but the, goes, the string goes through it, exits it's out here. Very compact. I don't blame you for not being able to get in there and yeah. see all of your, <laughs> uh, all of your components. It's super cool.